Hi, I am Asuka Gauri again and this time I'll show you how to create a file system in an LVM logical volume. I'll use my CentOS 7 system for demonstration. However, the commands and procedure I'll use work pretty much the same on other popular Linux distributions and their spin-offs as well. Also for this video, I have already allocated a 1 GB disk to my Linux system. Here's a list of commands that I'll be using in this video. The lsblk command to list disk devices and view their status. I'll be using this command to identify the disk that we'll be using. pvcreate is an LVM command and this command we use to initialize an entire disk or a disk partition for use in LVM. The vgcreate command is to create a volume group. A volume group is a logical container that houses physical volumes created with the pvcreate command and the logical volumes created with the lvcreate command. The lvcreate command is to create a logical volume within a volume group. The mkfs command is used to create file system structures. We can use this command to create xfs file systems, ext4 file system structures, ext3 or ext2 file system structures. The mount command to make a file system accessible, the df command to view file system size and mount status information, and the umount command to make a file system inaccessible. So let's get it started. Let's run the lsblk command first to identify the disk that we have available for use. sudo lsblk and my password. And as you can see on the screen, sdb is the disk that we used in one of the previous videos. I have a new disk allocated to this system and it is identified as sdc. It is one gigabyte in size. Now, unlike with the parted command, there is no need to label this disk if we want to use this entire disk in LVM. We're going to use the pvcreate command to create LVM structures on the sdc disk physical volume sdc successfully created and we can verify by running the pvs command here the pvs command shows a summary of the physical volumes we need to use the sudo command so sudo pvs and here is our sdc physical volume it is one gigabyte in size as noted by the command the next step is to create a volume group and add this physical volume to that volume group so we use the vgcreate command for that purpose. sudo vgcreate name of logical volume. Let's use lab vg and add the sdc physical volume to this volume group. Volume group lab vg successfully created. And we have a command called vgs volume group summary that we can use to list all the volume groups that are currently available on the system. There is this volume group called CentOS. It was created at the time of OS installation. It is 15.51 gigabytes in size and it contains one physical volume and it contains two logical volumes in it. The volume group that we just created LabVG, it has one physical volume in it which is the slash dev slash sdc of size one gigabytes. The next step is to create a logical volume and for that purpose we use the lvcreate command. With the minus uppercase L we specify the size of the logical volume that we want to create. Let's use the size 600 megabytes. Let's call it lab lv1 and then the name of the volume group in which we want to create this logical volume lab vg. Logical volume lab lv1 created successfully. And we can verify this by running the lvs logical volume summary command. It shows us that the lab lv1 logical volume is created. It is part of the lab vg volume group and it is 600 megabytes in size. The other two logical volumes that you see in the output are the logical volumes that were created at the time of OS installation. One of them is used by the root file system and the other one is for the swap purposes. Now we can also use a command called VG display which provides more in-depth information for the entire volume group and the objects it contains, the physical and the logical volumes. So VG display minus V and name of the volume group and pipe the output to the more command so that we can see the output one page at a time. The name of the volume group is labvg, format is lvm2. It is readable and writable 
and resizable, which means we can add more physical volumes to this volume group to grow the size of it. Currently, there is one logical volume in this volume group and there is one physical volume in this volume group which is active at the moment. There is no limit of how many logical volumes we can create in the volume group or there is no limit on the maximum number of physical volumes that we can add to this volume group. The volume group size is 1020 megabytes. The PE size, physical extent size is 4 megabytes. Physical extents are created when we add a physical volume to a volume group. The default size is 4 megabytes. The concept of physical extent is similar to the concept of block in file system. There are a total of 255 physical extents in this volume group at the moment. If we multiply 255 by 4, we will get 1020 the total size of the volume group. Now we scroll down logical volume information. This is the path to the logical volume we just created slash dab slash name of the volume group and then the name of the logical volume. Pretty straightforward and pretty logical as well. Name of the logical volume, name of the volume group. This logical volume is readable and writable and it was created on server1.example.com system and this is the timestamp when this logical volume was created. 600 megabytes in size and this is the physical volume information in the volume group. Name of the physical volume is this. 255 are the total number of PEs of which 105 are available for use. So we checked all the information for the volume group, the physical volume and the logical volume. And the remaining procedure is to create file system structures and mount it. So let's use the mkfs command, make file system, minus t specify the type of the file system. We want to create xfs file system type, slash dev, slash lab vg, the volume group name, and then lab lv1, the logical volume name straightforward press the enter key and the xfs file system structures are created in the logical volume and here's the information successfully created no issues and the next step is to create a mount point so let's call the mount point lab lvm create it and then use the mount command to make this file system accessible lab lvm directory and we run the df command with minus h option and it confirms the mounting of the file system right here on this directory 597 megabytes is the size 31 megabytes is used 567 megabytes are available six percent is used for file system purposes and this is another device file name for the logical volume right here Lab VG is a volume group name, hyphen, and then the logical volume name. Now let's unmount this file system. sudo umount slash lab lvm. Unmount it and update the fstab file with this new file system entry. Go to the bottom of the file and add a new line by pressing the letter O. Slash dab slash lab vg slash lab lv1 logical volume device file name the mount point lab lvm type of the file system xfs all the defaults we don't want to use any non-default options here zero and zero we don't want to perform any checks on this file system Save the file, exit out of the VI editor, and now we can run the mount command with the minus A option. The minus A option will instruct the mount command to mount all the file systems that are listed in the fstab file, but they are not currently mounted. So let's run this command. No error messages on this screen, and that's all. So this brings us to the conclusion of this video. Try the file system creation procedure that I demonstrated on your Linux systems. I suggest to perform it on CentOS Linux, Ubuntu Linux, as well as Open Source Linux. Don't forget to check out the manual pages of the 
commands that we have covered in this video. The lsblk command, the pvcreate, vgcreate, lvcreate, mkfs, mountdf, and umount, and vgdisplay commands, as well as lvs, pvs, and vgs. The lvm commands have several options available with them. I didn't choose most of them, but they are available to create custom logical volumes and custom volume groups.